Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight for 23 ABC News at 5. I'm Melissa Flores. Jessica Harrington has the night off. Tonight's top stories. Thank you. Thank you all for coming out. And I got to tell you, from up here, you look beautiful. You look beautiful. Bakersfield feeling the burn this afternoon. We'll tell you what presidential candidate Bernie Sanders said during his rally in southwest Bakersfield. Plus, going one on one with a U.S. senator, we spoke with him ahead of his rally to hear his views on a number of topics. What he had to say, 23 ABC News at 5 starts right now. Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News at 5 starts now. We begin this evening with breaking news. The Kern High School District announcing today that the North of the River Recreation and Parks District swimming pool has been closed due to asbestos contamination. According to KHSD, it was notified of the contamination. NOR notified the district last week that the pool was closing for maintenance. North and Frontier High students were moved to the Kern High Aquatic Complex and McMurtry Aquatic Center while the pool remains closed. NOR says it checked and it checks and monitors pools each Wednesday. For updates on this story, you can head to our website, turn to 23.com. Now to our other top story. We are more than 48 hours removed from the commander in chief's visit in Bakersfield. And today, presidential candidate and U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders arrived in town. He held a rally in southwest Bakersfield at the Spectrum Amphitheater this afternoon. And that's where we find 23 ABC's Lesla Gooden, who was there for his rally and has more on what he had to say to the audience there. Lesla. Yes, good evening. I'm here at the Spectrum Amphitheater here in Southwest Bakersfield, where every seat was filled. Many remained standing as they cheered and chanted for presidential hopeful Bernie Sanders. He talked about everything from increasing um, minimum wage and also providing universal health care and defeating President Donald Trump. Cheers, applause and booze could be heard during the rally as Sanders discussed his grassroots campaign. Sanders hit the stage with full momentum, asking the people of Kern County to get out and encourage them to participate in Super Tuesday. The greatest applause could be heard when discussing health care and the largest boos were when he mentioned President Donald Trump. Today I spoke with supporters who say they're still somewhat undecided. Others say they've been on Sanders' side since the start. And coming up tonight at 6, we'll hear more on his speech and from supporters on what they thought the rally really meant to them and they're grateful that Sanders also came to visit them. For now, in Bakersfield, Leslie Good in 23 ABC News, connecting you. Lesla, thanks. While many rallied to support the presidential candidate here in Bakersfield, some people were opposed to the idea of Bernie Sanders in town. A sign outside the Finish Line Bicycle Store off of Stockdale Highway across the street from Cal State Bakersfield reads, Bernie's a fraud. 23 ABC reached out to the store for comment on the sign. They responded by saying that, quote, the sign is our statement. Ahead of this afternoon's rally, 23 ABC also had the chance to speak with Senator Sanders. 23 ABC's Tory Cooper spoke to him one on one to discuss key issues that matter to local voters. Tory. Yes, Sanders and I met at Meadowsfield Airport where I had a chance to ask him about his plans on how he aims to support the farmers in this community in terms of the water issues they face and how he plans to keep big oil and ag industry jobs here in Kern County. After Senator Sanders canceled his appearance at Cal State Bakersfield in October of 2019 following a heart attack. Four months later, Sanders returning to the Valley speaking in a one on one interview with 23 ABC News about his mission. This is a working class community. Our agenda speaks to the needs of the Latino community, of the black community, of the white community. We're bringing people together that says that we need an economy and a government that maybe, just maybe, might start working for working people and not just the billionaires. Supporters in Bakersfield turned out to welcome him to the Spectrum Amphitheater for a campaign rally. The Democratic frontrunner for president says he is here to get more Californians to the polls for the March 3rd primary. As for farmers and the water problems they face in the valley. So the farmers here 
they get allocated X amount of water each year, but they still have to pay X amount of dollars. So would you plan to give them more water? I think that, well, it's, this is a difficult issue, and it's something we have to look at. I can't give you a definitive answer now. But right. a lot of that has to do with local issues and, and state decisions. When asked about how he plans to keep oil and ag jobs in the Valley, Sanders says he has came up with a climate change plan proposal that protects fuel workers' livelihood during a transition from fossil fuels to clean energy. We're talking about five years of income, five years of health care, five years of the opportunity for job training. So it is a very generous proposal as we transition away from fossil fuel. Highlighting his reasons for making it a point to stop in Bakersfield when he lands in the Golden State. Because I like Bakersfield. Because you like Why it? not Bakersfield? <laughs> <laughs> we like to go where other candidates often don't go. Look, uh, bottom line is uh, that we are working very hard to have a large voter turnout uh, in California. Uh, we have put together an extraordinary grassroots movement. It's multiracial, it is multi-generational. Uh, and we have, as of this point, if you can believe it, knocked on almost one million doors. And by the time uh, election day comes, we'll probably have done a lot more than that. So we think we've got a good shot to win because of our grassroots movement. Now, Sanders headed to the amphitheater right after we spoke, but he did want to make it clear that workers in the working community can count on him for support. But for now, live in studio, I'm Tori Cooper for 23 ABC News connecting you. And the senator was informed by U.S. intelligence officials that Russia is trying to help his presidential campaign. He addressed it earlier today. Let me tell Mr. Putin, the American people, whether you're Republicans, Democrats, Independents, are sick and tired of seeing Russia and other countries interfering in our elections. The intelligence community has been very clear about it. Whether Trump recognizes it or not, or acknowledges it or not, they did interfere in 2016. The Washington Post first reported on Russia's attempts to help Sanders. Members of Congress and President Trump also have been briefed by U.S. officials. Sanders addressed the Washington Post report while campaigning here in California. U.S. officials have been investigating Russian involvement in domestic presidential elections since the 2016 election. And of course, we'll have much more on Senator Sanders returning to Bakersfield on 23 ABC News at 6. You can also find our full coverage of his visit at the Spectrum Amphitheater and our interview with him by going to our website, turn to 23com And you can watch our coverage, of course, by downloading our mobile and tablet apps. Nevada residents are on the final countdown until the start of the Nevada caucuses, and Democrats are working to avoid a repeat of the chaos surrounding the Iowa caucuses. Party officials won't commit to releasing the unofficial results of Saturday's Nevada caucuses on the day of the vote. They're emphasizing accuracy over speed in the aftermath of the chaos surrounding the Iowa caucuses. Tom Perez, who is the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, told the Associated Press that he doesn't know when the results will be released. He said several factors, including early voting and potentially a high turnout, could affect the tabulation and timing of results. According to a history professor, Nevada made some changes to avoid the fiasco from Iowa. I think that one of the ways to avoid that was that they got rid of the app that Iowa used, but this also meant having to train people on something new. The early voting may be the biggest problem because it required voters to choose three. Unlike the November general election and state primaries that are run by state and local election officials, the caucuses are administered by state parties. A rushed effort by Iowa Democrats to deploy a mobile app to caucus organizers for sending in results ended in failure, with some volunteers not able to download it to their personal cell phones or access it. Well, Kern County is on storm watch as we head into the evening hours tonight. Through most of the day, we were seeing these passing clouds, and that's ahead of the system that is going to be bringing scattered showers throughout most of the afternoon tomorrow. Now, temperatures didn't feel like a storm was coming through. We were in those 70s yet again today, but slightly cooler than yesterday because of those cloudy conditions. But we have been tracking an increase in those winds, again, coming from the east. So that's dry desert air that has been pushing into the valley, and those winds are 
are only going to continue in the overnight hours, but by Saturday afternoon they will be coming from the northwest. So that means finally some fresh air pushing in. So what does that mean for air quality? Well, it's still going to be in the moderate range tomorrow, but on the lower end, definitely better than what we've been seeing for the past two days. We'll have an AQI of 53 and there's no burning unless with a registered device. But this low pressure system will be pushing over Southern California later this evening and bringing that wet weather across the region for most of the day on Saturday. So when will that rain start? It looks like between the hours of 8 p.m. till 11 in the valley as well as in our mountain and desert cities and we are definitely going to be seeing that tomorrow so I'll let you know what that means for temperatures as well as just how much rain we will be receiving coming up next officials in Arvin announcing earlier today that the boil water notice has been canceled according to Raul Barraza Jr. from the Arvin Community Services District the problem has been corrected and the order is no longer necessary officials say there was a problem with the drinking water and were advised to boil and disinfect all tap water used for drinking and cooking purposes the boil water notice was in effect starting on Wednesday the two 13 year olds accused of starting the deadly Porterville library fire have been charged with murder with special circumstances. That's according to the Tulare County District Attorney's Office. 35 year old Porterville Fire Captain Raymond Figueroa, who is from Bakersfield, and firefighter Patrick Jones, who was 25 years old, died in the library fire on Tuesday. A procession was held for Jones yesterday after his body was finally recovered. In a statement Friday, the DA's office said that the teenagers are also facing arson related charges. Both minors denied the charges against them. They're scheduled to return to juvenile court on March 11th. A public memorial was held earlier today for those firefighters. California has sued the Trump administration to block new rules that would let farmers take more water from the state's largest river systems, arguing that it would push endangered populations to extinction. Local Assemblyman Vince Fong has responded to that move. The lawsuit was filed yesterday and comes just one day after President ceremoniously signed new rules in Bakersfield, altering how federal authorities decide who gets water and how much. The lawsuit asserts that these new rules to direct water projects operations lack safeguards for protected species and that their habitat in Sacramento and jo uh, San Joaquin River watersheds. It requests that the court declare the Trump administration's adoption of these rules unlawful. Assemblyman Fong releasing a statement this morning. He wrote in part, quote, this counterproductive lawsuit by Governor Newsom is yet another example of how the state of California continues to work against the best interest of the Central Valley. He added, at a time when Central Valley leaders are working with our federal counterparts to bring more safe, reliable and stable water supplies for our communities, farmers and ranchers, the governor's litigation creates uncertainty and hurts all Californians. To read the full statement, you can head to our website turn to 23.com we're learning that the bear valley springs officer who accidentally shot himself has officially been charged the kern county district attorney's office confirming the charges with 23 abc chad foss faces a misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct for being drunk court records show that foss was under quote extreme alcohol intoxication when he shot himself in the leg at the oak uh, Oak Country Club on New Year's Eve. Foss was placed on administrative leave. It's not known when he'll be in court next.